so we got both cams rolling again. We got the BTS camera rolling. We got the main Yuri's camera rolling. I'm gonna do an audio sync. Yuri's narrative, take number two, and action. Hey, and what's up guys? Welcome to this video. You can see the kids dentist tank behind me and I'm finally able to show you the full making of and the review with all this stunning hardware in the cabinet uh, below the aquarium, thanks to Logan uh, visiting me here in Europe. So yeah, why don't we travel in time and see how everything has started. So this build is one of a kind that excites me the most, mainly where I get involved into the project from the very beginning. Hey, what's up guys? This is day one uh, of this project. The aquarium is going to be delivered today. Actually, I'm a little bit late. The aquarium is already there. So yeah, let's see what the guys from MLR and if we're going to get the tank inside smoothly and so excited. Ah! So, first obstacle is solved. We got the frame into the elevator and this is a good news because we don't have to put it all the way vertical so we can transport it horizontally. And now let's get it inside the building. So, I got involved into this project when it was a blank slate. There were no walls, no furniture, no floor, like nothing. It was like a huge empty space. Uh, when a client reached out to me, he presented to me like a floor map and he said, look here, I want the aquarium. This is going to be the waiting area. I want it to be a room divider, a 360 degree layout where the people and the kids can walk around. All the gear should be removed from the outside, go through a dry chamber in the middle. Everything should be below the tank and he doesn't want any wires to be between the light and the aquarium so it needed to be powered and suspended from the ceiling and also for the water changes he wanted me to do it kind of seamlessly through the bottom so there are no wires no tubing pipes laying on the floor while i do the maintenance for the safety of the people wow, Whenever you start with a blank slate and you have a project like this, you can easily put up a wish list. So on my wish list I had, I need power from the ceiling, I need power from the bottom straight underneath the aquarium, I need a water tap underneath the aquarium and I need a sink underneath the aquarium. Having all these four components, I was able to fulfill the customer's requirements. And yeah, I had to work with contractors, an electricity guy, he made the lighting suspended from the ceiling, all the wires go up, uh, so seamlessly you don't see any wires going down. And for the filtration and the water uh, treatment, I'm using an RO system and the water changes, they go into a sink bucket that is kind of pumped away from underneath the aquarium, underneath the floor. And it was absolutely no problem since they've been doing kind of the same thing uh, for the offices where they're doing the dental work, uh, because in the dental chair they need water and a sink uh, as well. So that was a no-brainer and has been uh, done by a subcontractor. I'm very happy to have this sink bucket on the left side of the cabinet. I had to wait for this to happen, so then we put a metal cage around it on the floor uh, which supports the aquarium. The metal cage is made from aluminium profiles and as well as the metal frame and the aquarium itself. They are built by Aquarium Ammo and uh, I'm working with them many years, trusting them and uh, yeah, it has been a good structure so far. So once this sink and the water tap, everything has been installed, um, I've been able to install the rest of the gear, which is two times ADA canister super jet filter. One is the 1200, one is the 2400. They are the biggest uh, ADA canister filters available in Europe uh, with super, super big biomedia load with super strong pumps. And those things are built to last your lifelong. Unfortunately, they don't, they don't come with any pre-filters or heaters or 
quick connectors or any of this stuff, but you know, they have one purpose, strong flow filtration. That's it, simple. So I had to work around that uh, and I've been able to achieve it with an inline uh, heater from GBL and an inline CO2 diffuser just to keep as much hardware out of the aquarium as possible. And also to be able to disconnect the lily pipes and the tubing and everything, I used Eheim quick connectors with a double tap so I can disconnect it easily for maintenance purpose. So this is for the filtration. I used to have ADA lily pipes on both sides, but one of them I have recently upgraded to the Aquario Neo Flow uh, with a built-in Neo Flow skimmer, uh, which keeps the surface clean and has allowed me to remove the classic Eheim skim uh, from the aquarium, making it a more clean look. Also, it is super easy to clean the inflow because you can remove the bottom part and then you can go with a tube brush inside and keep it clean without removing it from the system, which I think is super handy. Let's talk about the CO2. I already mentioned I have an inline CO2 diffuser from GBL. It is connected to the GBL Touch computer, which monitors the pH and the temperature in the aquarium and constantly turns on and off the solenoid to control and keep the pH level and the CO2 amount in the water constant all the time. The water changes are performed with a reverse osmosis water. The system is permanently installed underneath the aquarium, attached to the fresh water tap. The wastewater goes straight into the sink and is then pumped away. Same goes for the dirty water when I'm doing a water change. To make it easier, I installed like a branch and then there's another tab so I can turn and off tabs and the water goes from the filter straight into the sink as well. The clean water from the RO system is collected in this water reservoir which holds exactly needed amount to perform a 30% water change and is pumped inside the aquarium uh, with an extra hose and pump. The water is kept in movement by a tiny pump so it stays fresh and clean inside the reservoir and there is also another little pump located inside this reservoir that is attached to another computer that controls the water surface level. So it basically compensates the evaporation, which is an outer top of system from Tunze. And uh, yeah, it's working great, keeping the water level constant, refilling the evaporated water with pure RO from the reservoir. And that's it, a lot of stuff underneath the cabinet. All the wires, complete mess, please don't judge me on that. Uh, I somehow never had time and once the cabinet is closed, you know, nobody sees it, but hopefully one day I will be able to fix it. Above the tank we have Kessel lights. They are Kessel's 360X freshwater LED beams, super powerful, actively cooled, suspended from the ceiling and remotely controlled through Wi-Fi dongles. The tank itself is a 180p, which stands for 180 centimeter length, 60 centimeter width and 60 centimeter height, which means it can hold 650 liters of water. Now, why don't we talk about the layout that I have created inside? I have used Tropica soil, a couple of substrate additives, spread everything evenly out, maybe with a tiny slope towards the middle, so I have this 360 degree view. Then I have used Unzan stones. They are specific volcanic rocks from ADA with pockets that can be filled with substrate and plants inside of them. I use this for a basic hardscape structure as well as some manzanita wood and I fixed everything with my super glue and cotton pad technique so everything stays in place and doesn't move around. Also this way you don't have to pre soak your wood and it has worked well as always and if you want to learn more about this technique check out my pro tip on it will be linked below the like button by the way if you enjoy watching this video hit the like button it does help a lot this channel thank you okay guys we are going to talk about plants in this aquarium in a second but I have to give you a little warning I'm going through some algae issues right now, so you've been warned and I'm gonna address the issue later on in the video. For the planting of this aquarium, I've chosen a lot of easy category plants. This is something I like to do with custom aquariums. I like to keep it simple, also to make my life uh, easier, to keep the maintenance low so I don't have to trim the plants very often. Uh, I try to make it colorful, I use a lot of different species. So you will see on the outside of the aquarium, there is a Leolopsis brasiliensis carpet. 
In between you have uh, a lot of little highlights which consist of Starogani ribbons. Uh, then you have the Hygrophila Aruguaya which creates a nice contrast between the bright green of the Starogani and then the deep red of the uh, Hygrophila Aruguaya and then this mix of Leoloptus brasiliensis in between. There's also some Marsilia Rizuta blended in. The tank is 1.5 years old now and you have this uh, mixed carpet look. I use the variety of crypts. I love crypts using in client tanks. They don't need a lot of maintenance. We have Cryptocorini Pechii, we have Cryptocorini Venetii Green, Venetii Brown. We have a special one from ADA, which is the Cryptocorini Spiralis Tiger. And then we have the Cryptocorini Flamingo. I used to have uh, a lot of Butsifalandras in this tank. You can see from the build, like majority of the wood has been covered by the Butsifalandras, but I have recently removed them because the tank is going through some issues right now, um, as you can see. In addition to all of that, we have a big portion of Nymphia Lotus. Uh, by the way, majority of the plants in this build were for Tropica as well, and none of this is sponsored. This is a private plant project. We also have the Apunogeton Madagascar, uh, it was brand new in Tropica's tissue culture range back then. I received like a sample. I think now you can get it more or less frequently in the limited edition. From Danila, I have added the Amania Pedicillata Golden. We have some leftovers from Bluxa Japonica. I used to have a lot of Bluxa in there. Also planted it inside when it was a sample, a test sample from Tropica. Now I think it's in the limited edition as well. And last but not least, we have Monte Carlo, the Micrantimum Tweedii Monte Carlo growing on the Unzan stones. I planted the Monte Carlo specifically in those pockets. It looks super cool in the beginning. Now it is a little bit overgrown and I'm actually looking to rescape this tank very soon. Now that we have talked all plants, let's talk about the fish in this aquarium. For fish, we have the Harlequin Rasbora, SPA species mainly. We have the Diamond Tetra. Fun fact about the Diamond Tetra, it's naturally breeding inside this aquarium. You can see a lot of different size of the Diamond Tetra because there's a several generations, I would say, every month or so there is one or two, sometimes three juveniles like fry that come through, survive and grow up. So, Initially they were like 10, 15 of them and now I think they're becoming more and more while other species are becoming less and less. So I think over time if I would keep the system going the Diamond Tetra probably would uh, take over this tank as a dominant species. In addition to them we have some large Guramis in this aquarium. Uh, they have so much character and very curiously observing and looking for shrimps. We have uh, Amano shrimps in here and we have red cherry Sakura shrimps which are naturally breeding course only the sakura shrimp and we have some uh, dwarf corridoras, corridoras habrosus, we have some autocinclus catfish in here, we have my favorite cletum corona, uh, neurite snails that keep things clean and unfortunately this tank also suffers from some freshwater shells or mussels, um, they're like small white animal you can see on the glass, uh, very difficult to remove or to get rid of. Uh, the best pro tip I would give you, take a tiny air hose and just suck them out uh, this way. By the way, I haven't mentioned yet that I submitted this aquarium into the IPLC contest last year. So you can see here my final shot from last year. It hasn't ranked uh, too well, I guess, because uh, the aquarium has been built to be a 360 degree. And on the image you see basically just half of the tank. It looks very flat, not a lot of depth. Uh, and you see the dry chamber in the middle kind of ruining the image. But anyhow, I tried my best to capture a nice final image of that. And now that I have a final image of the layout, there is no more to achieve with this aquarium. So I'm super curious like how you would scape an aquarium that is 360 degree viewable from all four sides. Uh, let me know guys in the comments below what you would do for the 2.0 version and eventually you are going to see this in the near future. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did so, once again, show me with a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers.